Today, let's look at confidence intervals. So the main idea behind it is that many times we won't know what the population mean is, and a way to find it or to estimate it is to construct a confidence interval. So essentially the population mean, mu, which is unknown, will be between two values, okay, at a certain uh, confidence level. So, for instance, if we if we're calculating a 95 per, 95% confidence level, what it's essentially saying is that we're 95% sure that the population mean is between these two values. Okay. So, the lower value is going to be x bar, so the sample mean minus the z value times the population standard deviation over the square root of n. And the higher value is going to be exactly the same, but with a plus instead. <clears throat> An equivalent way of writing this is that the confidence interval is equal to the sample mean minus the error bound for the mean, comma, sample mean plus the error bound for the mean. Okay? And again, a third formula, which, equivalently, which is equivalent, is that the confidence interval is equal to the sample mean x bar plus or minus the margin of error. So z alpha times the population standard deviation over the square root of n. So as you can see, this value here is essentially the same as these in all the other formulas. Okay. So I won't get into any details today of what the margin of error is, um, but just bear in mind that this is the margin of error, okay? Right, so let's apply these formulas to an exercise. The exercise reads, a machine is set up such that the average content of juice per bottle equals mu, with a population standard deviation of five centiliters. A sample of 100 bottles yields an average content of 48 centiliters, Calculate the 95% confidence interval for the average content. Okay. So first of all, like always, let's write down the data we can gather from the question. So the population standard deviation, sigma, is 5. The sample size is 100, because there's 100 bottles. And the average content, so the sample mean is 48 centiliters. Okay. So... Like always, here we're dealing with a normal distribution, okay? Where the population mean is in the middle. And then we want to find the z-value, which is to the right, somewhere to the right of this population mean. And what we want to do is we want to find out the area to the left of this uh, z-value, okay? Now, the way we find the area to the left is we take the confidence level in decimal places, plus one divided by two. The confidence level in our case is 95%. So we do 0 0.95 plus one divided by two. If you plug this into your calculator, you should get that this is equal to 0 0.975, okay? Right, so now that we know the area to the left, Let's try and find this z-value by looking at the positive z-score table. Now, as you can see in the title of this table, it says that the, type, the table values represent the area to the left of the z-score. Okay. Now, remember, the area we found was 0 0.975. So, what we want to do is find this area inside here. So, 0 0.975 is right here. So now that we found the area, we need to go horizontally and vertically to find the z-value. So horizontally we get 1.9, and then we need to look vertically, and we do plus the vertical value, so 0 0.06, and this is equal to 1.96. So this is our z-value. Okay? Very good. So now we know that the z-value is 1.96. Excellent. And one last thing we need to do before we apply these formulas is to find the sample standard deviation, which is denoted by sigma x bar. And the sample standard deviation is equal to the population standard deviation over 
the square root of the sample size. So the sample, the population standard deviation in our case is 5 over the square root of the sample size, square root of 100. So if you plug this into your calculator, you should get 0 0.5. Okay. So as you can see, what we just found out is this part of the formula. Okay. So this is the sample standard deviation. Okay. So now we have everything we need to construct the confidence interval. So let's go ahead and do that. So first we have x bar, so 48 minus the z value times the sample standard deviation, so 0 0.5. And then less or equal, then we have the population mean. And then the same is here, but with a plus. Okay, so 48 plus 1.96 times 0 0.5. Right, now if you plug this into your uh, calculator, you should get that the value on the left if is 47.02 and the value on the right is 48.98. So that's how you construct a confidence interval. And so finally, we can write that the 95% confidence interval is 47.02, 48.98. So if we put this into words, what this essentially means is that we're 95% sure, or 95% confident, that the population mean mu is between these two values. So somewhere between these two values. Okay? Excellent. Let's look at another exercise. A hospital wants to estimate the average length of stay in days, mu. It takes a random sample of 100 patients. From the sample, it calculates that the sample mean is 4.53 and the sample standard deviation is 3.68. Calculate a 99% confidence interval for mu. So again, here it's slightly easier to see the data that we have. So let's write it down. So n is 100, like it says, the sample mean is 4.53, and the sample standard deviation, s, or we can also denote as sigma x bar, is 3.68. Okay. So again, here we're dealing with the normal distribution, with mu in the middle, and again, we, we want to find the z value, which is to the right. So again, we need to find the area to the left. So again, we use the formula. So the area to the left is 0 0.99, so 99% of it in decimal places, plus 1 divided by 2. Okay? And this should be equal to 0 0.995. Okay? So what we need to do now that we know the area to the left is we need to again go back to the table, the positive z-score table, and we need to find the z-value. So we have 0 0.995, and let's try and find it. So 0 0.995 is between these two values, okay? Now, I'm gonna choose this value here because it's the one that's closest to 0 0.995. Okay, so what we need to do now is again, we need to go horizontally and we also need to go vertically to find the z-value. So we have 2.5 horizontally and then plus 0 0.08 vertically, which is equal to 2.58. So again, this is our z-value. Very good. Now, the difference between this exercise and the last one is that in case you hadn't noticed, they give us the sample standard deviation directly in this case. So it means that we don't need to do what we did here with this formula, okay? They directly give it to us, which simplifies our life. So now we, we only need to use the formula, right? So let's construct a confidence interval. Again, we have the sample mean, so 4.53 minus the z value, 2.5, 
2.58 times the sample stand deviation, 3.68. And then we do the same on the other side, but with a plus. Very good. Okay, so let's plug these values into the formula now. Let's see what we get. Okay. So minus 4.9644 on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, let's see. we should get 14.0244. So again, that's how we construct the confidence interval. And then finally, what we can say is that the 99% confidence interval is minus 4.9644 comma 14.0244. So again, if we put this into words, what this means is that we're 99% confident that the population mean is going to be in between these two values. Okay, so that'll be it for today's exercise for today's video. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to answer them.